I know everyone's heard of the story of John Rambo and all of his exploits, but have you heard of the true story of Greece's Rambo, the story of Manolis Bakakis? Welcome to the channel. Today I'm reacting to a video from History Chest. This is One Man Army, the incredible story of the Greek commando Manolis Bakakis. Let's get to it. On July 20th, 1974, Turkey, taking advantage of the coup against the President of the Republic of Cyprus, Archbishop Macarius III invaded Cyprus. So this was in 1974 and the military coup happened because they wanted Greece to annex Cyprus. And Turkey actually used the Treaty of the Guarantee, which was signed back in 1960, as an excuse for invasion. On the night of July 21st to 22nd, Greece sent, for the first and last time, military aid to Cyprus during the Turkish invasion, by air transporting commandos at Nicosia Airport. The Operation Victory, as it was named, was carried out with the use of Nord Noratlas transport aircraft, which belonged to the 354th Pegasus Transport Squadron of the Hellenic Air Force. And because they're not showing any maps, I just wanted to point out that this invasion actually happened in the northern part of Cyprus. And were located at the Suda Air Base in Crete. One of the commandos who was transported that night to Nicosia Airport was the 20-year-old Cretan Manolis Bakakis. Bakakis was born in Amygdalos of Asterusia, Crete, in 1954. Unfortunately, his childhood would be marked by a tragic event that would follow him throughout his life. On Easter 1966, 11-year-old Manolis was playing with his two cousins, aged 8 and 6, in the paddock, where his family had sheep. There, the children found a weapon and began to examine it. The gun fired, and the youngest child, six-year-old Antonis, was killed instantly. The shock of the tragic accident was great, and his family was forced to remove him from the village. Manolis initially ended up in the village of Stoloi with an uncle, where he- So why were they forced to remove him? I mean, obviously it was an accident. What happened to the other cousin? Did he get in trouble and have to be removed from the village as well? He graduated from primary school. Later, he was transferred to the village of Agios Thomas with another relative. The child grew up away from home and his family, having the memory of the accident as a burden. He would return to his village only after his dismissal from the army. PTSD. The Turkish invasion of Cyprus found Bakakis serving in the special forces. He was among the commandos who were ordered to board the transport aircraft, without being informed of where they would be sent. The commandos entered the Noratlas, and embarked on a suicide mission, as the international media later called it. They were transported and landed at Nicosia Airport, amid fighting and bombing. The National Guard of Cyprus was not informed in time about their secret mission, and thought they were Turkish. As a result, they opened fire, and even shot down one of them. There is actually one survivor from that plane that was actually able to bail out before the plane went down. And yes, he did have some horrible injuries, as you can imagine. The paratroopers, who landed at the airport, quickly took up defensive positions, ready to face the Turkish invaders, who were trying to encircle Nicosia. Bakakiza's unit split, and the commandos spread out, to better repel the enemy attacks. He found himself on a hill, with a Cretan comrade in arms, named Baikonakis. At dawn of August 16, the Turks began bombarding the hills, and in the chaos of the explosions, the two comrades were separated, and thought of each other as dead. Baikonakis retreated, found the rest of their unit, and reported the loss of Bakakis. Bakakis was found alone on the hill, with only one recoilless anti-tank rifle and eight missiles. So if memory serves, that is the M67 recoilless rifle, a 90 millimeter anti-tank weapon, which was designed to actually fire from the ground using a monopod or a bipod. However, you could have also fired it from your shoulder as well, just like the Carl Gustav in the AT4. He soon noticed the presence of a Turkish tank platoon, consisting of eight American-made M48S and an infantry battalion, moving towards him. Instead of retreating, he crawled into a trench, armed his gun, marked a Turkish tank, and successfully hit it. He was determined to defend the hill to the death. 
The Turks were surprised, but responded with fire against the hill. Bakakis kept his composure, changed position, dragging his gun and missiles with him, marked the nearest tank, and hit it. Then, he marked a third. Another successful hit. The young commando showed excellent skills, and did not waste a single shot. His constant movement from one place to another, made it impossible for the Turks to neutralize him. How much does the weapon and the rounds actually weigh? Because I can't imagine it was easy displacing with that bulky weapon and all those rounds. I mean, wow. Bakakis destroyed six Turkish tanks with six missiles. The last two tanks of the enemy platoon changed direction and left the battlefield. The disbandment of the tank platoon frightened the Turkish infantry, which was dispersed, to protect itself from Greek fire, not knowing that on the hill, there was not a Greek unit, as they believed, but only one commando. The soldiers of the battalion found refuge in the building of the Gregory School. Bakakis was left with only two missiles, and decided to use them as well. He fired one shot at the ground floor, and another at one floor, killing many Turks. Thus, not only did he manage to stop the Turkish advance all alone, but also to inflict heavy losses on them. So I don't think they have exact numbers on how many Turks he actually killed. However, they do estimate that he actually faced about 2,000 Turkish soldiers during this engagement. Having exhausted his ammunition, Bakakis tried to hide and find his unit again. He spent the next few days wandering with an empty gun in his hand, without water or food, under the adverse conditions of the hot summer of Cyprus. Eventually, he managed to reunite with his unit, which considered him dead, and returned to Greece. Bakakis's feat proved to be of the highest military importance. If the Turks crossed the hill, they would gain control of a strategic point for the control of Nicosia, and the way would be opened, for the subsequent encirclement of the city. In the afternoon of the same day, a ceasefire was signed between the two warring parties. So just like the Korean War, this war never officially ended, it's still considered to be a ceasefire status today. Bakakis and the other Greek commandos, who were transported to Cyprus and thrown into the fire of battle, inflicted huge losses on the Turks, and did not allow them to cut off Nicosia, or occupy the airport of the city, which is still under the control of the United Nations. When he returned to Greece, his commander wrote a report, and suggested that he should be awarded a medal, but the Greek state did not respond. In 1974, Greece established the Medal of Gallantry, which is Greece's highest military medal. It would be equivalent to the United States Medal of Honor or Britain's Victoria Cross. To this day, not one soldier has been awarded it. Bakakis was never honored for his achievements and the heroism he showed. He never asked for recognition and honors, and tried to move on with his life. He married his beloved, Nikki, with whom he had two children. Unfortunately, his life ended abruptly in 1994, when at the age of 40, he was killed in a car accident in Peloponnese. Manolis Bakakis, like the other Greek soldiers who fought heroically in Cyprus during the Turkish invasion, passed away without recognition and honors. However, the final outcome of the invasion would have been very different, if he had not shown such courage and efficiency, by stopping the Turkish advance in his sector on his own. The Greek state may have forgotten him, but he has rightfully won a place among the modern Greek heroes of history. What special forces unit was he in exactly? So quick clarification, he was actually recognized by the Greek government in 2015. I'm not sure if he was given an award or just a recognition. If you do know, then please drop it in the comments. But who here agrees that Sabaton needs to write a song about this guy and Indy Nidell needs to do a history episode on him because this guy was a legend. And if you do want to watch another video on the Greek military, then here you go. Thanks for watching.